I believe it was Klaus who mentioned Wi-Fi 7 in passing. What is the standard name? What is the time frame expected? And what are the uh, expected improvements over Wi-Fi 6 or 6E? Wow, those are very good questions. I'm only just starting to dig into it now. I mean, the truth is that standardization only just started. Uh, there, there's actually a very good paper out that will tell you pretty much all of the tremendously ambitious goals for the, 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 so the what will eventually be called Wi-Fi 7. And it, which gives me an opportunity to plug our website. So if you go to Wi-Fi now, global.com, you will see at, I think it was last week's uh, news roundup, that there is mention of Wi-Fi 7 and in there, there's a link to a, a very detailed paper from, from the IEEE actually on all the features and it's super interesting. It's very detailed, very technical, but, but uh, for those of you who are technically minded, you'll enjoy that. So there's, uh, there's basically uh, only been a few meetings, I think. So the time frame is about five years and they started, I think maybe at the most six months ago. So there's four and a half years to go until the standard is in principle or supposed to be uh, done, right? So the standard will be called uh, 802.11BE, right? And, um, and it will eventually be called Wi-Fi 7 you know, once the Wi-Fi Alliance decides to call it that. So officially it's not really quite Wi-Fi 7 yet, but we do tend to call it that anyway a little bit. Um, and, and there's three, I think, I mean, a couple of the things that they're doing is they're multiplying everything by a factor, right? So we've got 160 uh, megahertz channels for, for Wi-Fi 6, and those are going to uh, go up to three, 320 megahertz channels. So, and um, that's just one thing, and, the, and there will be much higher order multi-user MIMO involved and so on. So it's basically more in every category, uh, multiples more in every category. The, the good thing about this, and somebody made, mentioned that in the stream as well, I think and there was a question, are you gonna talk about Wi-Fi 6E or 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi on the show? I don't know if we are, but what I can say is that BE, the Wi-Fi 7 standard together with uh, 6 gigahertz, which is a huge amount of spectrum now allocated in the US a little bit less in the UK and more countries are coming on that is going to be a combination that is, um, well, that is going to fundamentally change uh, our, connected, our connected world in ways that we can probably not imagine. That's, that, that's, a, that's an ambitious claim. Um, mm -hmm. Klaus, while I've got you, when do you expect 6E to be available? Uh, well, so 6E, I mean, the chipsets are already available from uh, most of, well, I think most of the large manufacturers and I know that uh, there is work going on on 6E. I think uh, we will see products uh, uh, over the next six months to a year that principally use uh, the six gigahertz band for meshing. So not so much for the end product, then not so much for your phone, but more for connecting, for example, within your home um, mesh units. And the beauty of that is that you can really build a tremendous backbone, especially in your home, but in principle also in the enterprise, um, a, a tremendously powerful backbone because you've got so much spectrum to work with. So uh, the kind of mesh performance that you get today uh, will be tremendously enhanced because all of the backhaul be, will be running on six gigahertz and then you can run uh, your usual Wi-Fi applications on the five gigahertz once you get to the endpoint. So uh, there's tremendous room for, for performance um, improvements there, but I think we'll see it in, in backhaul and meshing first, right? Darren, Jonathan, and it, what's Cambium's take on that 6E availability? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're working on that now. Um, as Klaus said, the, the, the you know, Qualcomm supplied us with the chips to start the development work. Um, we're, and as Klaus mentioned, the, the nice move there, he's talking about how he's really basically acknowledging the fact that the clients don't yet have the capabilities to support it. So, you know, uh, you don't want to buy that, you know, it's like, it's like buying a Tesla before they had the, you know, the, uh, the big power chargers, you know, you're, you're limited in where you could go. Um, and so, so by having it device to device, you know, in a mesh configuration, the manufacturer has both, both ends of that link. So that, that's a smart way to go. What Cambium is, we're building the access, the access layer network so we're building uh, 6E into the next generation technology, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna try to be a little bit smarter about it. We're gonna use software defined radio. I'm not, I'm not gonna say very much because I'll be, I'll be opening the kimono too much here, but, but we, we are doing some special things with software defined radios to make sure that when people do make that jump or they, they buy that product that supports 6E, they're not gonna be left with a radio they can't use.
Let's just so put it that way. Anybody who's been keeping tabs as I have, that is now six flexes from Darren. Six. 